<laughs> you think Brady enjoyed making Breeze have no hair and he's full quaff? The <laughs> oldest matchup of quarterbacks in playoff history. The number one defense versus the number one offense. Ravens, Bills, Browns, Kansas City. We got it all with this panel. <laughs> Who did Breeze look like in that, in that Brady tweet? <laughs> He looks like the guy from Get Out who would have voted for 44 a third time. Looks just like him. <laughs> so yes, the oldest matchup of quarterbacks in playoff history. The most high profile game between Brady and Breeze. And the third time this year they've met. New Orleans rolled Tampa each of the previous two. But maybe you think these are different teams now. Tim Callishaw, around the horn to you. Who's got the advantage going in, Brady or Breeze, Tampa or New Orleans? I think the answer clearly, Tony, is Tom Brady and the Saints, which really doesn't tell us much. Okay, There's a little thank bit you of for that. There's a bit of, a bit of a problem, but what I mean is this. We saw last week the shock to me uh, wasn't that Tampa Bay beat Washington. It's that that Washington front four did not get near Tom Brady most of the night. He, he had a clean pocket. If they can make that happen against that team – then they can do that against the Saints, and I think this will be a much more competitive game, obviously, than the last time these teams got together. But the Saints still, the fact that Brady is better than Breeze at this point doesn't really matter. The Saints are a, they're Marshawn Lattimore's team, they're Camara's team. They got all kinds of weapons on both sides of the ball that I think are better overall than what Tampa Bay brings. Sounds like Kalashaw's leaning New Orleans. Woody Page, how about you? I'm leaning way New Orleans because I want Breeze and I want the Saints, and I'm not afraid to say it like Tim yeah. is because Breeze playing on – I know you're not going to like this, Tony, but I'm going to set myself up. Artificial turf, the New Orleans uh, Superdome is the best artificial turf in the game. They played nine year, games a year on artificial turf with the one in Atlanta, and they're just much faster on that. You can look at it. You can see Kamara, that he is able to make quicker moves on that. I like it because of artificial turf. Even though they don't have much of a crowd, 6,000 for this game, I just like this team a lot better. When you consider defensively, and people talk about the Bucks' defense, as Tim did, that – Lattimore against Evans 72 times in their last uh, three games have been matched, and Evans is 0 for 6 when he's targeted on those plays. So I don't think Evans is going right? to make a big difference in the wow. game. And I think that Lattimore is. He's a guy that you're looking for to maybe intercept Brady because Brady's thrown some interceptions. Give me Breeze. Give me uh, Liberty. And give you the Saints, yes. And give you artificial turf, I guess. Clinton Yates, where are you on this matchup? Yeah, I don't care about the field surfers. The bottom line is that the Saints are a better football team than the Buccaneers. They've outscored them by 46 Good. points this season, which is the most in the history of the league going into a third matchup between is that two right? Teams. So it's not as Good if it just happened there. to happen. Okay, that yeah, aside, yeah. also, the Buccaneers play extremely poorly against the Saints. They, have an, they were 11th in the league in third down conversion against everybody else. That drops... 15% when they play the Saints. They just haven't figured them out. That's what's going to happen here. Brady has to find a way to get protection in order to be able to convert those third downs and keep the ball on the field. Otherwise, they don't have a chance. So that was a lean Saints from Kalashaw, a fall flat on their face Saints for Page and the Yates. Sarah Spain, what do you like going into this one? <laughs> I think this is a closer game than the beatdown that we saw in the regular season. But most of what we're saying about this Bucks team and why they're different is because they beat up on competition that wasn't good. The Falcons twice, the Lions and the Vikings. And then they barely beat a Washington football team with a fourth string quarterback. Now, I will tell you, I was impressed by the numbers they put up offensively against a good Washington defense that's fourth in overall defensive DVOA. But I wanted that to be a much more declarative victory for me to think that they could go in and do something against the Saints team. Team that's been so effective against them the first two times they met this year. I'm leaning harder than Tim, but okay. not quite right. as much Thank as the other much. to the Saints. So I guess, Tim, uh, you're, you're the only one who's giving Tampa a chance here, and, and Sarah's looking for a declarative yes. statement. Make a declarative sentence here at the very least. I don't, I don't have a declarative statement on this game. Penalty, penalize me all you want. I think it's going to be a close game. It'll come down to a field goal. I don't even know what the line is. 
Uh, I think Tampa Bay has a chance to win, but I think the Saints are a little better team. Right. There. War for New Orleans. Yep. We'll <laughs> move on. Ravens, Bills. They met last year, week 14, in Buffalo. Baltimore put Josh Allen down six times. Lamar Jackson had three touchdowns in the game. Ravens won 24-17. Although this time, I think you'd all agree, Buffalo may be a more evolved team this season. Sarah Spain, around the horn to you. Which quarterback do you trust more Saturday night? Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen? Well, there's a tiny part of me that worries about uh, Josh Allen reverting back to what we saw last playoff year when when all of a sudden he forgot how to football. And there are those risky plays that he makes that can turn a game. But overall, I feel more confident in his ability to be a mobile quarterback who also has a big arm. Lamar Jackson is so dependent on the run, which can look good against this Bills team that's allowed the third most rushing yards per game, averaging 160 plus per game. But in the last two seasons, the Bills have not allowed a quarterback to gain more than 61 yards on the ground. To me, when they shut down Lamar Jackson, Jackson, even if they're a little bit uh, not able to stop down the rest of the rush from that Ravens team, that's all they're going to need because their explosive offense is going to take care of it. Josh Allen has so many weapons to throw to. He is a totally different QB this year. I'm taking Allen and the Bills. Yates, who do you trust more going into Saturday night? Allen or Jackson? Absolutely, Lamar Jackson. The notion of shutting him down is not as easy as people think. The guy's got more 100-yard rushing games than any other quarterback in the league, not named Michael Vick, and he's got 10 of them. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, that is what the Ravens need to stick to. Okay, look, if they go with designed runs for Lamar, as they did last week, they allow him to open up that passing game in a way that doesn't just feel like he's scrambling when he's on his feet and actually keeps a defense off balance, which is what his skill is, forcing guys to stop when they're watching him play. Overall, though, I think against the Blitz, that's where Allen has improved this yeah. season, especially since that Ravens game. And if the Ravens can do that well, I think that they can pull this back. Ravens blitz, league high, 45% of the time. Josh Allen's thrown 19 touchdowns this year against the blitz, which is also a league high. Woody Page, when you consider all that, who do you got in this game? It, yeah, you were going right in the direction I wanted to go. And I'll just add yeah. to that, not only 19 touchdowns, if you include last week, against the Blitz, and the Ravens do blitz at least 40% of the time, yeah. he is quarterback rating against the Blitz is number three overall in the league. So he handles the Blitz. That is the Ravens' strength. And that's not going to make a difference. Lamar is going to be stopped because the Bills have stopped Cam Newton. And I know he's past his prime, way past it. The, Murray couldn't run against them. Mm -hmm. Jackson couldn't run against them last year. They are going to design their defense, already have, to stop Lamar Jackson and make him beat him with his arm. And if they can keep him from throwing deep, and I think they will, that the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen have got this. Josh Allen knows how to play in the snow, Clinton. Lamar's never even played in the snow. He sounds like he's afraid of being in a game in the snow. Oh, my God. He played in a bowl game in the snow once. Big deal. Come on, man. He's Lamar Jackson, all right? They Woody got a chance is, uh, with that. Woody is wrong. The Ravens are going to win the game. The Ravens, uh, are, I'll be as definitive and declarative as you yep. want me to be on this. Uh, if it is bad weather, that only helps Lamar Jackson. He's the greatest running quarterback of all time. If you're having to deal with him with any kind of bad footing uh, and, and see where he's going, you're in big trouble. Baltimore benefits by their midseason slump, which forced them to play well all throughout December just to get into the playoffs. It's the opposite of a year ago when they basically sat out the last week of the season, had a bye, and then weren't ready for the Titans. This year, they shut down Derrick Henry. They took him out of the game. If they can do that, they will beat the Baltimore. The, and the Buffalo, Buffalo hasn't been uh, benefiting from playing well the last three months, Tim Gallagher. Their only loss is on the hell Murray. Well the <laughs> they didn't play that well against the Colts. They could have easily lost that game. You got Baltimore. Woody's got Buffalo. Sarah Spain? Bills. Yates. Ravens. The Doppler has changed a little bit midweek to, to now, Woody Page. It's now below 50-50 snow, maybe an inch by the end of the game. If it comes in a little bit earlier, might not be the snow you've been expecting. We're going to move on. Game of inches. Tony. NBA of now. Inches. Uh, did you guys check out the Nets <laughs> post-practice Zoom today? There were, I think, 96 participants at one point. That's how you use a mute button. So... Today, James Harden was introduced, and he said all the right things. He thanked Houston for his time, but then he's got a better chance uh, at a championship here with Brooklyn. And also word that Kyrie Irving, he's being fined for his absence and lost game checks. Fined 50000 in the league and lost nearly a million dollars in game checks, but could be ready to go tomorrow, Saturday. So could Harden, if everybody clears their um, medical tech from the trade.
So, Clinton, are we back to basketball now? Whatever we're back to, I hope we're back to a situation in which these guys want to be around each other and they feel that they can do what makes sense in order pr to proceed. We talked before about how Steve Nash is in a unique situation as a rookie coach dealing with three superstars right now that have never really, you know, he's never really been in a situation like this. For all the things people wanted to say about Kyrie being spoiled and so on and so forth, what I took from that was here's a guy who loves to play basketball who doesn't want to play right now. And whatever the reason for that may be, you've got to figure that out before you put him back in a situation in which he is playing so with a new teammate, with sort of a renewed focus in terms of this finals or bust situation, I just hope that they can get along in a way that's going to allow everybody to want to actually play because that's obviously a concern for both Harden and Kyrie at this stage regarding the next round. Page? Page, you keep saying, I'm hoping, I'm wishing you. It sounds like we really don't know what's going to happen. Kyrie comes back and plays on Saturday. Okay, that's good. Is he going to play next week? We don't know because we don't know the reasons. We have feelings about what probably uh, was responsible for, for his feelings at, at this point. However, does this team fit together? I know we talked about that when, when LeBron went down to Miami and it worked out well, but we don't know. Harden and Durant split up at one point in their careers. They didn't want to play with each other. So you, we don't know whether this is going to work out. We can wish and we can hope and we can pray, and it just doesn't matter until we see them all together and see them playing on a regular basis, not being hurt, not being having their feelings hurt, not being together. It's too much, to me, it's too much of a puzzle. I don't want to minimize, you know, an absence right now, Woody, about feelings being hurt, if that's okay. We're going to look at Tim Kalashaw now and the idea that we could be back to basketball and we could finally see the big three Brooklyn has worked months to try to pull together. Yeah. We're, we're going to see it at some point, whether it's Saturday or not. And, and, you know, when this happened on Wednesday, I wasn't nearly as high as George Sedano was on where you have to rank Brooklyn now because <laughs> I think there's some obvious everybody can figure them out some obvious difficulties with these three guys and one basketball. But if you just take it down to its most basic level, three guys walk into a gym, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and they say, we got next. You want to watch that team play. <laughs> They're the most yeah. fascinating team. They may not be the best team, but you want to see how that stuff is going to work. And pretty soon here, we're going to start to see and it. Sarah Spain. Yeah, to Kalashaw's, Kalashaw's point, we've, um, we've removed the items from the suitcase on this particular trade and all the reasons that it may not work out to not use a potential Well, you big just, word. okay, yes, but please go the ahead. Question, yeah. The question that you asked was, are we ready to get back to basketball? And the only answer to that will be given by Kyrie Irving. The communication that we've had throughout this has been so lacking that we don't know why he was sitting out. We don't know why he was choosing to go to a banned club in the midst of a pandemic, maskless and, and with lots of people, and why he was choosing to be seen so many times. This is a dude who wanted to be seen at that party, who wanted to be seen on that Zoom. We gotta figure out why, and we gotta figure out why those are more priority to him than basketball before we can say him coming back means everything. Do we good. have to figure that out, or does Steve Nash and the Nets have to figure that out? A lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, yeah. that's the point. So, the greatest big threes of all time. Anyone saying this is number one? Do you take it over LeBron and Wade and Bosch? Over Kareem and Worthy and Magic? Over Russell and Kuzi and Adlicek? We need some defense. Anybody? We need Just some defense. Shooting. Just in a shooting. Fire cell is next. Not as fast. Michael Jordan and two guys off the street. <laughs> against the Broncos that he was going to be a head coach in the league soon. I'd never heard of him. And yes, the job he's done defensively, the personality he has, it's over the top like uh, it's like the coach in Seattle. I think he's going to be great for New York and that media PC? market and the fans. It's a good hire. I like the fact that the Jets didn't focus on today's specific issue. What do you do about Sam Darnold and the offense? And they went bigger picture, which is what you should do with a head coach who hopefully is going to last five, six, seven, eight years and have a lot of other things to deal Everybody's with. Everybody's buying the hire. Uh, Eric, the enemy uh, name that we wanted to see wow. what his offense could do as a head coach. That's not the hire here. Sarah Spain, what do you think of Sala and New York? Well, yeah, to Tim's point, they already had a quarterback guru in Adam Gase, so you can only go down after you got him in there. <laughs> so you focus on the defense okay. instead. One other question. I agree with everybody else. Leadership, personality, energy, everything. This is the right hire to change the culture there. You asked if it was a good move for him. It'll be interesting to see if there was a better opportunity, because he was doing interviews everywhere, to go somewhere that has a lot more talent, because that's what the Jets team is missing in terms of personnel. I say again. Is Eric Bieniemy not going to be hired in this, this offseason here for NFL coaches? Houston's coming this way. 
coming this Where's way. Where's this way? Clint Yates, what are you baby. talking about? The Chargers? Okay, we'll move on. Colts, baby. Coming back to the number old one old defense game. versus Play number here. one offense. That's what Rams Packers is this weekend. I got a question. Does anybody know? When a number one offense plays a number one defense, what the breakdown is in the post, Tim Callis, show, you're nodding. Who's got the advantage, offense or defense? Defense wins, yeah. and it's by a lot. I think it's like five or okay. six. Okay. It's three to one in the last 20 years, the defense yeah. over the offense. So go ahead, Tim. What, I went who do you back. favor in this matchup? Having said that, I like the offense of the Packers. I don't like the <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't like the Rams going up to, uh, to Green Bay and winning there. And I don't like Goff's thumb throwing, uh, you know, pushing shot puts out there to his receivers. So I got to go with Dar Spain. Yeah, that defense might be doing good things for the Rams, but that offense is giving points to the other team. 25 turnovers, 16 of those from Goff himself, and that's not even counting with that injured hand where he's limited. So to me, the offensive firepower of the Packers is too much. Lin Yates? The team thing is one thing, but when an MVP goes up against a defensive player of the year and they both won it twice, the MVP wins more. And also, Jared Goff does not throw touchdowns when the starting game kickoff temperature is freezing. 0-5. Oh, so. Okay, so you've got Aaron Rodgers, the former MVP, over Aaron Donald, hey, the, the defensive player of the year. Woody Page, how about you? I'm going and love me some Aaron Rodgers and Adams. They complete 77% uh, of their attempts. Ramsey stops all pro receivers, 39% of the team. What about that other 40%? That's going to mean the difference. Did anybody follow the numbers there? The statistical soup? What numbers is there? No. Oh, Woody, that's just a fortunate it turn of events. Browns, Kansas Area City. One. Sammy Watkins doesn't think it'll be a test. He may have forgotten the last two months for Kansas City. If it is one possession games. He's also not even playing this week. There's house money and then there's what the Browns are playing with after exercising demons and winning last week. Sarah, is there any chance, any path to victory for Cleveland here? The path would be the run game. They're two-headed monster taking on a Kansas City rush defense that's 21st in the league. But to me, Patrick Mahomes elevates his game and has done so against the playoff teams this year. Browns have a terrible secondary. They just won't be able to stop the Chiefs offensively. He does that because Eric Bieniemy's offense is not going to spot the Browns four touchdowns like the Steelers did, and the Browns barely pulled that out after that. After that. I'm not taking the Browns whatsoever. I think the Chiefs are too strong overall. It's not a path, it's a boulevard. Kansas City is worst in the league when teams get in the red zone for giving up touchdowns, and the Cleveland Browns are the third most successful team when they get in the red zone for scoring touchdowns. How's that? Now that is a better stat, Woody Page. You're back in it. Tim Kalisha? It's a good stat. I'd give him another point, maybe, but it's still <laughs> not a path to victory. The, the reason Kansas City's been winning all these close games is because they're Super Bowl champs waiting to get to the playoffs. The playoffs are here. They're not going to screw up and start slow like they did against Houston a year ago. There's no path. Well, even when they did start slow, in every single postseason game last year, they got enough, yeah. enough to pull it out. Oh, Woody Page. What? Could 